All right, just got down to our Tampanese hub for tonight's game between Geelong International and, of course, Lion City Sailors. <laughs> Vince Bessacourt opening up his SPL account for the Eagles. 1-0. The anthem of course playing all over the stadium. What a goal that was. Again, another slow start by Lion City Sailors. So about 22 minutes gone, Vince Bessacourt. He's everywhere on the pitch right now and Lion City Sailors have no idea how to handle him. It looks good so far for Geelang. The fans are up for it. The Ultras Eagles as usual downstairs. Just making a hell of a lot of noise, especially when the goal went in. That's a, That's a good ball over the top. Oh my goodness. Oh, a little bit of a break for LCS here. Song Yong to Faris Ramli. Faris Ramli! Oh! Why did the target from Faris put through by Song? Oh my goodness. I've got to say, Geelang have Lion City rattled here. 30 minutes gone and really only one clear cut chance so far for Sailors with Faris Ramli. But besides that, all in all, nothing so far from Sailors. Everything is coming from the Geelang side and the fans here. Especially Ultras Eagles are up for this one. Oh! Oh! Zuzu! Ref! Ref! Oh, he's off! He is off! Had to be a red card. Last man. And it just gets from bad to worse here for Lion City Sailors now. Will Kimbo, who's unbeaten record, come to an end? Oh, good save. It's still there though. Is he on? Oh. Oh my goodness. All right, half time here at oh, Tampanese Hub. It's 1 0 to Geelang International and a sending off for Lion City Sailors. Pedro going off in, in the 30 plus minutes there. But my goodness, what a start by Vince Bezacourt, especially. What a goal and what a start from Geelang in, in general. What, what a game. What a game of football we witnessed thus far. Half time. I think Bezacourt, there was so much excitement about him coming into the league and he's lived up to the billing, really. 45 yeah. minutes, not just the goal, the link up play, the touches. He put the ball through for Sime Zuzul to go through before Pedro was sent off. So it's been all action really from Geelang. Surprising, yes, but we saw an upset last Friday. I know it's only half time, I don't want to get carried away, but hey, if Geelang keep this up against 10 men LCS, you never know. That's the thing, think about it. Kim Do Hoon is still unbeaten in the SPL. This might be his first defeat, but what do you think he can do in the second half to change it up? Because I'm, what can he do anyway? He can do lots. You look at the bench, you got Diego on the bench, you got Maxim on the bench. Who else do you have? You have Kim Shin Wook on the bench, you have Shadan on the bench. Look at look at those names. They are there to they are there to make an impact. Yeah. So we talked about it earlier. If you have a squad, you're bound to rotate, which he did early on. Yeah. He might have learned the lesson the hard way, but he's got 45 minutes to rectify that. And when you look at that bench, I'm sure it'll give him confidence to come back stronger. I don't think Geelang are gonna be able to keep it up for 90 minutes. They will be back against the wall towards the end of the game. But at the same time, as LCS bomb forward in search of an equalizer to start with. Anything can happen, Geelang can hit them on the counter because we've seen Zuzul and Bezakor link up so well, so it's so wonderfully poised this one, I can't wait. Yeah, what do you think, what do you think is going to happen in the second half? I'm going to put you on the spot here, Arshad, what do you think? Wow, wow, what do, you, <laughs> what do I think is impossible to answer at this point, purely because of the reasons I mentioned, right? But, 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 I do think LCS are going to break Geelang hearts. Ah. I, I just have this sneaky feeling that they have a bit too much in them. I would love to be proven wrong for Geelang's sake. But I do feel LCS just have a bit too much strength in them. I think they might sneak a draw 1-1 one is my prediction. Alright. Roshan, of course, Brayton R&R. &R. Do check them out. We'll leave the links in the description and everything else. Alright. Cheers, guys. Put triple substitution. Diego Lopez and Kim Shin Wook on as well as Amaru Adli to strengthen up that defence, you know, especially with the dismissal of Pedro. Last throw of the dice here for Kim Do Hoon. He's brought on Maxime Lestien already now. Uh, only 55 minutes gone. But three... Three of the top stars are already on, Lestien, Lopez and of course Kim Shin Wook. So, still a long way to go, still 35 minutes more of this game. Gela fans absolutely loving this right now. Not too sure how much the crew are enjoying it though. Oh! Huh? What? Wait, what? I mean... Oh, what a ball. Diego. Diego! Oh, what a save! What a save! What a save from Zyphon Nizam. Jeez! 
Diego Lopez bearing down on goal. What a save that was. 70 minutes gone, honestly, over the last 25 minutes, you know, even with everybody on at the same time, there's only been one real chance so far for Diego Lopez. Last row, the dice there for Kim, for Coach Kim, bringing on um, Hafiz Noor. Last row, the dice. Worked last week against Haugang. Got to bring it back to three years ago. First game of the season for Geylang. They beat Albrex by one goal to nil in the last minute thanks to uh, Yuki. And uh, that basically ended Albrecht's almost two-year undefeated record. Can they beat the undefeated record of Kim dong -hun? So close, they are 15 minutes away from doing that. Four minutes of added time. Four minutes of added time, four minutes for LCS to save this and to keep their unbeaten run going for Kim do -hun. But honestly, they haven't had much opportunities, except for now, they might get one. It's cleared. What's oh, another ball in? Diego is there. Oh, okay. And Zaifu Nizam like in the whole game so far. International FC 1, Lion City Sailors 0. Just like three years ago, an unbeaten record comes to an end. Kim Do Hoon's unbeaten start with Lion City Sailors comes to an end thanks to Geylang International. Fantastic stuff. Absolutely brilliant from them. I thought in the second half they were absolutely fantastic. And uh, you know, they did their job in the first half. Pedro sent off. You know, after that, they just kept on pulling, kept on pulling together, believed, and uh, you know, end up winning the game. with the victorious Ultras Eagles and of course very special member Eugene over here so just ended the fan cams the Gala fans behind me all happy but at the end of the day it was a great victory for them you know two, three years ago they ended the unbeaten run of Albrecht Legata now they've ended the unbeaten run of Kim Do Hoon with the Sailors so honestly great game great game all around and uh, this Gaylang side honestly they look quick why are you giving me like, okay. For you, bro. Yeah, for you, <laughs> but anyway, it was a great victory for the Geylang boys and long may it continue because I think this is what we love the league for, you know, the thrills and spills of everything else and this is the kind of competition that we want and hopefully we'll see that more soon. On to the next game. See ya! Hey guys, Jerome here on the way to Jerome East Stadium. Unfortunately, I could not be here for yesterday's game between Elbrex and Balestier Khalsa. It's unfortunate that Balestier Khalsa had to go through that, a 6-0 defeat. Um, it was just a spell of 15 minutes of absolute madness when, you know, everything seemed to be going in for Alberic. So, I mean, uh, that's just definitely a lot of work still for uh, Coach Akbar to do. I mean, with more training and with more time with Coach Akbar, I think, you know, hopefully it'll do well. So, but yesterday Alberic seemed to be on fire yesterday. Unfortunately, Ballester had to be on the end of their bounce back. But, you know, good for them because, you know, Alberic haven't had a... Uh, haven't had a good first couple of games, so it'll take them a little while. Uh, now, on to Tanjung Parker United. They are back in action. You know, they have players returning from COVID. Sharon Sabrin back in the side. And uh, Kyril Amri, Kyril Nizam all on the bench. So, really good signs for Tanjung Parker United. As for Hauga United, they do have players that return also. Amir Zalani in the starting lineup. Lionel Tan alongside Kaishu Yabazaki. So, I mean, uh, changes in the sides, but hopefully not uh, not a change in the tenacity of the game. So, really looking forward to it. Harold from Premier Football Podcast, as usual, here at the Jurong East Stadium. Dude, how was the game for you? Because in the first half, it seemed as if there were no clear-cut chances until suddenly there was a flurry for Haugang in the yeah, like later yeah, towards the end. Yeah. It seems that, you know, Tanjung Paga for a team that's gunning for the top of the table seemed a bit cagey right from yeah. the start. But, you know, as the game develops, I sort of I sort of get a hint that that's what their game plan is. Yeah. You know, at, you see Haugang, they probably, you know, got a hint of what Haugang has been trying to do. You know, we saw them, how they played against LCS. Yeah. They, they had this 
dogged mentality of playing out from the back. Yeah. So Tanjung Paga just straight up flooded the, the penalty box three players, but they didn't close them down. Yeah, right? that was the thing I saw. You know, we were, you were constantly bugging about how yeah. they were all in the box, but still did not put any pressure on Ridwan because there seemed to be something there. Because Ridwan also, as he's a good goalkeeper with his hands, but with his feet, he can be a little bit suspect. Mm. So I was quite surprised they didn't really challenge him for, for the ball as much as they did. You know? Yep. Yeah. But I've got a feeling that that's actually Tanjung Paga's game plan. Yep. Where, you know, you put the three players there and they're playing, basically, they're telling Hao Kang, look, I, I dare you to play around us. Yeah. Right? Yep. And I think they got a hint against LCS that Hao Kang probably can last only maybe 30 minutes each half. That's true, actually. If you yeah. see them, right? After the 30 35 minutes mark, they're tired out. A yeah, and then Tanjung yeah. Paga got the upper hand, you know. Yeah. Maybe a couple of good chances with Tanjung Paga after that. Yeah. But yeah, admittedly, Hakan did have the, the better field chance. Yeah. But I gotta say, I've been really impressed with Amir Zalani, you know. He, mm. He's been. He was in the side in 2019, up to a little bit in 2020, unfortunately, had to go for NS, you know, like everybody does, and he hasn't had a spot on the side, but good on, on Pradao to actually bring him back into the side, yeah. and Clement to bring him to the side, because I think he's done really well today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I He was he's better on the right flank than, yeah. you know, midway to switch into the left. Yeah. But I think he's definitely doing a much better job on the right flank. Yeah, I mean, yeah. his passing has been has been the eye-opener for sure, and, uh, you know, just waiting for more in the second half. What are you, what are you, what are you planning to see from uh, any one of these teams in the second half? I'd like Tanjung Baga to be a bit more on the front foot, stop being so cagey, yeah. right? Uh, Hao Kang, maybe the finishing needs to be a bit more uh, clinical, yep. right? But at the end of the day, I still think it's going to end up as a draw game. Uh, they definitely had their chances, so I mean, all, all to play for in this second half anyway, really looking forward to it again. I roll again from the S from uh, Premier Football yeah. Podcast. Check them out. Check the rest of the guys out as well. Catch you guys again. One nil to Tajo Paga United. Oh. What a ball by Mirko Suga just to split the defense. Shot eye with the ball across. And if I'm not wrong, Karo Nizam on hand to finish it for one nil here. Hasn't been a boring nil nil up to now. And it's now one nil. Karo Nizam with his first goal of the season. No stopping Nazro Nazari this time, through on goal, finishes it absolutely clinically. 1 1 here. And I've got to say, I think that's what Haugang honestly deserved because they definitely were the better side, you know, in large periods of the game. What a game this has been so far at Drongi Stadium, definitely. If you're not here, where the hell are you? That's what happens when you play Kaishu in midfield, you'll get that. What a goal that was. And just like that, Hogar United back into the game and now on top. Rising goal for Tanjung Paga United FC, player number 50, Shodai. Goal for Shodai Nishikawa. I mean, oh, I don't know, just no words. I'll talk about it after the game. What, what a game this has been. Promotion Sports Singapore. And our partner in Singapore Pools. Okay, one, two, three. Take his phone. <laughs> he doesn't know it yet. Hi, welcome to my light vlog, guys. That's all set up, by the way, for fan cams here. So it's very ratchet, but it does the job. Basically, I got a Canon, the so Sony with a Canon lens, a room mic, aperture. Light and a brandless. Okay, okay, we, ne we, we, we never asked for the like, tutorial. Or, yeah. <laughs> Just in case the fan want to know. Oh, we is what we do. You guys, first. stupid boy. <laughs> hey guys, Jerome here outside the Jerome East Stadium. Where so when we are not here, uh, Daras and I, this this guy there, or oh, whatever, wherever I'm pointing there, that one. This is how Jerome records on his own. I don't know how he does it, but fellas, God. So make sure you subscribe to the SG4 podcast and look at our photos. Yeah, me and Daras, the, the guy over there. See, look at that. Look at the angles. I'm gonna try and zoom. Oh shit, I can't zoom. <laughs> 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 